uh, grave concerns about this package, that it's smoke and mirrors, that it's spin rather than delivering what the sector really needs. The sector is uh, destined or is suspected to lose $5 billion and this package will not cover that shortfall. And that puts both student wellbeing but staff job security at risk across our sector. Universities Australia is, for example, projecting that there could be up to 21,000 uh, job losses across Australian universities. That has a particularly big impact on regional communities and the like. This has been the focus for a long time, how much money Australian universities take from international students, often at the expense of teaching quality. Is this not the time for Australian universities to be reflecting on how many international students we should have in the first place and putting that focus back on domestic students? The focus, I think, has always been on domestic students and I don't think international students uh, coming to Australia affects uh, teaching quality. I think it adds to the richness and diversity of our campuses. However, over the last decade, $10 billion has been of funding has been pulled out of Australian universities. And this has made universities dependent on international student fee income. So, for example, quarter a quarter of universities' incomes comes from international students. And COVID, the COVID crisis, which hit Australian universities very early and very hard, really demonstrates the problems of funding being pulled for the sector and this reliance on international student fee income. International students, I don't, I don't think they have any impact on teaching quality. I think people who teach in universities are happy to teach and love teaching everyone and um, they add to the richness and diversity of life on campus. I mean, there have been report, a lot of stories reported about teachers being pressured to pass students who don't speak English at a basic level just so that they can keep up the international student enrolment because it is such a cash cow, as you say. And so is this not the time for Australian universities to just be taking a step back and re-evaluating their business models as opposed to waiting for the government to fund that shortfall? Well, I think without letting Australian universities off the hook, as I said, the government really has pulled $10 billion out of Australian universities, which has made them, I suppose, look for alternative sources of income. But yes, we agree there are problems with the university's business models. And this is in part the reliance that they have on the high numbers of casuals who perform teaching and the administrative functions at universities. So, for example, over 50% of teaching at Australian universities is performed by people with no job insecurity, and these people have fallen through the gaps of JobKeeper and really, I think, point to some of the problems that our universities face. And, you know, no job, no job security comes at an enormous cost for these individuals. You're quoted as saying, though, we're happy to take their money in the good times to the point where it made up over 26% of university income in 2018, but when, but we say, sorry, you're on your own in the bad times. This is shameful behaviour. Why is that shameful? We can't just invite international students to come and study here, take their money when times are good and then when times are bad, leave them to fend for themselves. Many international students I hear anecdotally are really struggling. They've lost their own jobs, they're struggling to pay their rent and feed themselves. And Australia can't just look after international students when it wants their money and not look after them at other times.